This is a prototype, and it's one of the most unique closed-loop liquid coolers we've ever reviewed. Cooler Master sent us their first engineering sample of a new 200 millimeter closed-loop liquid cooler, or AIO as some like to call them, and it's built for the mini ITX Cooler Master H100 case that we saw at Computex. Technically, a cooler like this could also be used to mount to other cases with 200 millimeter fans, like the H500M or H500 cases, although the tubes would need to be longer. The cooler tries to solve the problem of matching radiators to 200 mil case intake fans since most radiators work best with 120 or 140s and would exhibit worse performance without leveraging the full surface area of a 200 fan. Today we're benchmarking this new cooler on our standardized bench to see if it's any good. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. 200 millimeter fans have had an interesting history. They kind of got really popular with the Half X, which we actually, in the last couple of years, retested if you're curious how it does these days. But the biggest problem with them was that, you know, that case came out, a couple others came out, the Phantom 820, for example, and people were liking 200 mil fans, but there was no standard. Everybody decided to make their own standard. And when other companies saw that and suggested, you know, we ought to have a mounting hole standard for 200 millimeter fans, they then went off and made a new standard to try and standardize all the standards and ended up with one more. So that was the biggest problem with 200s back in the day, and it still is today, as they've come back with the likes of the H500P, and then the follow-up, the H500P Mesh, the H500M, the H500, not to be confused with the H500, and uh, the whole spacing here, none of these line up. You, for every case, that has the whole spacing for this, you can get one screw in for this. And so uh, to get this to work on the 200 mil Cooler Master CLC, we had to use clamps, which is obviously not useful for real world, but it's fine for seeing yeah, how does this one do versus the CM fan, the MF200R. And uh, we tested both. This one screws in completely. This one you have to jury rig, but it'll work. And end result is, well, it sort of reiterates the long-standing issue that there's no standard for fan hole placement on 200. But uh, what we get to see here is a pretty unique cooler that tries to solve an old problem, which is those cases, the ones with 200s in the front like that, thin up there. Uh, if you have a CLC that you want to install in the case, you either have to put it in the top, which maybe you can't for some reason, clearance, whatever, or you put it in the front, at which point you should basically remove the 200s, which are probably why you bought the case, and then instead put in the CLC that takes up half of the front surface area, it looks kind of weird and off-center, and uses 120s or 140s. But if you mounted the CLC to a 200 fan and it's built for 120s and 140s, it'll perform really poorly, like extraordinarily bad. 200s have issues with static pressure. They're large, they spin slowly, they're not really meant to push air through a bunch of tiny fins. So uh, that's all the problems, and Cooler Master's trying to solve it with the CLC 200 unit that we reviewed. They don't have a name for it as of today. Uh, it's so prototype right now that we don't know what it's going to be called. We don't know if it'll ever be sold standalone. Basically right now they're planning to sell only with the H100, and the bundle price of the H100 ITX case and the CLC 200, as I'm calling it, will be uh, $100, which is actually not bad. It'll probably come with that Cooler Master fan too. So that's the, that's the story. If you want one of these, post a comment below. If you don't want it, post one below as well. And when I say if you want, I mean standalone, like not in that case, but just completely standalone, do you want one? Cooler Master is going to be reading the comments. So uh, if either way on this cooler, let them know if you want it or not as a standalone unit, because that'll di di help dictate if they actually bring it to market outside of the mini ITX case. So let's get into the data. We're going to do some LPM tests as well for linear feet per minute, airflow testing, and uh, we'll talk about noise, things like that, talk about which of the two fans is better, and then try to come to some kind of conclusion.
We'll start with noise normalized testing. As always, this is important for helping us establish cooler efficiency from one to the next, as best flat out thermal performance will always be awarded to the fastest and noisiest cooler, at least with the fans that are at higher RPMs like some of EVGAs. Users don't typically run fans at full bore when they're at, for example, 60 dBA, like the CLC360 is at full speed, and so we normalize the fan speeds to a 40 dBA noise level on all coolers for testing at a more reasonable volume. This controls a variable such that the coolers are more directly comparable rather than just looking at kind of a selection of maxed out coolers. Doesn't really mean a whole lot when you don't know what the noise levels are. The downside is that we chose 40 dBA for coolers based on smaller fan designs, like 120 or 140, which typically spin faster and louder. We made the cutoff thinking that 200 millimeter based coolers would never really be a thing, or at least if it became one, we'd figure it out when we got to it. Because 200 millimeter fans are so quiet on average, we can show a previous chart of our 200 millimeter Noctua versus Cooler Master review. We can't get the Cooler Master 200 millimeter CLC up to 40 dBA. We did get it close-ish at 37 to 37.4 dBA or so by mounting two CM fans to it in a push-pull configuration. Anyway, with this obvious disadvantage of only getting to 37 dBA out of the 40 dBA target for noise normalized thermals, the CM 200 mm CLC still ended up at about 38.7 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient, which puts it at roughly the same level as the Corsair H159i Pro with its similarly noise limited fans. The H159i Pro didn't have good fans on it to start and focused more on noise, which ended up landing it lower on this chart. So the CM200 cooler for being quieter than the others on what's supposed to be a noise normalized chart really didn't do too bad here. For flat out thermal results at full speed, the Cooler Master 200 CLC landed at 40.5 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient when using the Noctua fan, or 43.7 degrees when using the Cooler Master MF200R. Even splitting the difference, that puts the 200 millimeter CLC at around the performance of EVGA's 120 CLC when it was at 2500 RPM. That's a deafening of 53.9 dBA as compared to the Noctua and CM fan range of maybe 33 to 35 dBA. And it's not distant in performance, the CM200 that is, from the 240mm X52 at a medium fan speed. Comparing to the Kraken X42 140mm CLC with the fan speed maxed, which runs at 48.6 dBA, the CM200 ends up roughly adjacent to this one when running the Noctua fan, as both are at about 40.5 to 40.6 degrees Celsius over ambient, yet the Noctua CM combination runs closer to 33 dBA. That's a massive noise level reduction over two times the perceived noise to the human ear, not the same as acoustic power, but a massive change. And it's noticeable in use when compared to the X42 at its max fan speed, and the two get the same thermal performance. On one hand, a 200 radiator is producing the same performance as a 140 pump and radiator combo, just like the CM is a pump rad combo, but not by Asetek. But on the other hand, the fan makes all the difference and the noise levels are much lower on the Cooler Master unit. As for the push-pull performance, it's typically not worth running coolers in push-pull because the value dips so hard, but the Cooler Master unit ends up at around H100i Pro performance when Corsair's 240mm CLC is at full speed and uses a manual paste spread. Also in range of the 38.7 degree result is the Kraken X52 at full speed, another 240 cooler at 37.3 degrees Celsius over ambient. That's not bad for the Cooler Master unit, all things considered. It's still not practical, except in a few cases, and specifically the H100, especially because of the short tube length, but it's amusingly competitive with 240mm CLCs and raw thermals. Noise levels will depend on the fan chosen for this one. If running with the H100 stock fan, the MF200R, the cooler ends up at roughly 34 dBA when measured at a 20 inch distance. That puts it around the same noise levels as the other coolers when their fan RPMs are cut down significantly, like the EVGA CLC120 at less than half its full fan speed, or the Corsair H100 IV2 at just 1050 RPM. As a point of reference, we previously tested the linear feet per minute flow of the Noctua 200 fan and the CM RGB 200 fan, as tested through a mesh case side panel. We won't go through all of that testing methodology again here today. There's a separate piece on that you can watch or read that we'll link below. But the recap is that Noctua fans have 
always pushed more air than the Cooler Master fan when you're comparing the two 200 millimeter fans specifically to each other. And the two have roughly the same fan speed curve with the same rough maximum fan speed. So this is pretty close to a one-to-one -one comparison. It's not always significant, but the 423 0.5 FPM flow versus 378 starts to stack up at the max RPM of each fan. This is why we saw those differences that we did when running max fan speeds. Interestingly, in our previous testing with these fans, we did not measure a thermal difference as a result of the uplift in linear feet per minute flow, but we also tested them in a case last time, one of the H500 mesh cases since 200 millimeter radiators didn't exist. So ultimately we became bound by the limitations of the chassis and going forward, if we want to test 200 millimeter fans specifically, this radiator seems like a perfect fit for it and would better illustrate the differences. Although those don't necessarily extrapolate to equivalents in cases, as we've learned, they would be useful for more static pressure bound scenarios. We also had a previous result with the two fans noise normalized through the panel in that 2017 content, where we saw the Nocta 200 fan and its higher static pressure performance benefiting the results, always landing ahead at 34.5 dBA normalized, 33, and 31 dBA normalized through the panel testing that we did in that previous content. So that's Cooler Master's 200 mil CLC. It's actually really interesting. It's not bad. It's, it's hard also to be super critical on something that's a prototype engineering sample. So for example, with the one we're working with, there was no manual yet. The mounting hardware was, uh, it was not perfect, but it's an engineering sample. We don't know what it's going to look like retail, and it's probably mostly going to be done for you retail because it's coming in the case. And then for the rest of it, things like the standard Cooler Master mounting is used for the same as their Mirage series CLCs. We don't really like that mounting bracket system, but you only ever fight with it once, and then it's on there, and it's not terrible, really. It's just less efficient than an Ace Attack one. So... The cooler itself does sort of surprisingly well. We thought it would be really bad because if you think about it, it's a giant radiator and it's fairly dense fins, but it's not the densest we've seen. And then you're using a fan that's just generally, well, more in the case of this one, bad, <laughs> hit me in the face, at pushing, uh, pushing air through a bunch of fins. Static pressure is not great on these huge slow fans, but it did really well in spite of all that and ends up in the range of a maxed out 140 or a, at much quieter noise levels, mind you, or a 240 mil CLC with slower fan, like medium speed fans as we showed. So that's it for this one. Let us know what you think and let Cooler Master know if you want one standalone. If you got it standalone, it would need longer tubes, but they're aware of that. So uh, that's it for now. Subscribe for more as always. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly by buying shirts like this one, mod mats, toolkits, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.